There is this to say regarding this wine flu slash epidemic slash pandemic, about which you ask, this has nothing to do with one of the stupid conspiracy theories, which are invented, again and again, by panic mongers, know-it-alls and the pathologically deluded, who suspect malicious conspiracies behind any and all events. However, there is something more precise to say about that. In 1918, an influenza slash epidemic already raged with the pathogen H1N1, which, within two years, demanded around 50 million human lives. Swine flu also stems from this strain of virus. As a result of the Spanish flu, in the year 1919 the virus dynasty, so to speak, arose which has remained in existence up to the current time. That which is done by the pharmaceutical companies in regard to today's epidemic, respectively, swine flu, is enormous profiteering because anti-flu remedies are, worldwide, sold by them, through the governments, health organizations and private persons, as well as through the black market, for amounts in the billions. With these remedies, primarily Tamiflu, but others as well, a gigantic business is made and safety is promised, however this is only based on angst and panic mongering. This criminal business idea is based on the evil, angst producing scenarios which, one does not believe it, are constantly publicized by the WHO, respectively, the World Health Organization and by health officials and self-styled experts. So, already in the month of April, swine flu was declared the first pandemic in decades and thereby angst was stirred up. Naturally, the entire pandemic could have been avoided if the governments and the health officials, as well as the actual qualified employees, had immediately prohibited global tourism, and so forth, but that just did not happen. Since the outbreak of the epidemic slash flu around six months ago, to the end of the month of August, over 1,200 humans died worldwide, which, however, is very much fewer than is demanded by a normal flu. If it is considered that the Earth's population now amounts to over 7.5 billion humans, then the number of those who became ill, those still becoming ill and the dead, stands in absolutely no comparison to the insane mass of Earth's population. At least up to the month of August, 2009, the course of the disease will still provide no effective indications that swine flu, we designate every influenza as an epidemic, distinguishes itself from a quite normal flu. But the possibility absolutely exists that swine flu is still further enormously exaggerated by the irresponsible ones and is misused for a deal worth billions through which all those financially powerful ones, who profit as a result of this deal, want to, and also can, grow fat, as you are wont to say. They are not only the pharmaceutical companies, rather also governors and health representatives of many irresponsible profit seekers who, through shares, participation and turnovers, as well as through the black market, and so forth, earn enormous amounts of money with the flu remedies and mass inoculations. Readers question, death of Michael Jackson and the election fraud in Iran. Readers question, dear Billy, as discussed, I am sending you my questions regarding the death of Michael Jackson and the election fraud in Iran. Perhaps you can use them for the new special bulletin? Sincere thanks for your efforts. 1. Question. Of what did Michael Jackson die? And has his untimely death perhaps something to do with him suffering from the pressure of success? or even under the accusation of child molestation, which, however, could never be proven against him in court. 
Did he have a nervous breakdown? Do you know something more dependable than that which comes through the media? 2. Question. What do you know about the election fraud by Mahmoud Ahmadinejad in Iran? Is the extent and the significance of this election fraud bigger than is generally depicted from the official side? And would Mr. Ahmadinejad have again been democratically elected by the people even without election fraud? And why, actually, does the highest Iranian religious leader, Khamenei, and other state dignitaries stand behind Mahmoud Ahmadinejad with a hearty salome? P.S. Geller, Switzerland. Answer. Both questions can be answered with the following contact conversation excerpt of June 14, 2009. Billy says, but how does it stand with the election in Persia, respectively, in Iran? Is everything being done properly there? And do you still have significant predictions to mention? Patha says, I also have information about that. The entire thing is based on an unparalleled election fraud to the advantage of Ahmadinejad. Several million returned ballots must be designated as false and manipulated, which triggers great unrest and even exacts death. The election results had already been falsified some months prior to the election, whereby the so-called Guardian Council, as well as the authoritative religious dignitary, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei certainly are not involved. Khamenei will, however, declare the massively falsified election process as being legitimate and endorse Mahmoud Ahmadinejad in his office, one through deception, because Ahmadinejad, in a false manner, demonstrates solidarity with the religious system. There is certainly something to mention of significance in terms of predictions. For example, the King of Pop, Michael Jackson, in 11 days calculated from today, respectively, on June 25th, will suffer a cardiac arrest and pass away as a consequence of an irresponsibly negligent overdose of a cocktail of narcotic medications. Billy says, Poor bloke. In spite of his success and his acquired fortune, he has had a difficult life. But what was it actually with the assertion that he has been a pedophile and his molested children? With the best will, I simply cannot imagine that. Patha says, That corresponds to nothing other than infamous lies, which were invented by parents who had allowed their children to go to Michael Jackson, to then mendaciously accuse him in the courts, in an infamous manner and to financially exploit him. Due to my own interest, I have, at that time, made an effort about these things and determined that none of the assertions corresponded to the truth. Rather, on the contrary, everything was only mendacious inventions in order to draw a financial gain out of it.